Well, the countdown has begun to the start of the race. Let's go straight to the start line for all, all our live coverage. And there they are. All the elite men are lined up and ready to go. And there is the start of the 100 Cycle Challenge 2019 brought to you by the city of Akuraleni. It's a 100 kilometer circuit they ride before completing the final six laps of a five kilometer circuit to make up 130 kilometers in total. It is a UCI 1.2 uh, categorized race, which means there are UCI points up for grabs uh, for all our riders participating in today's race. We already saw the elite women's race take place earlier this morning, morning and now the elite men get to start at 11 o'clock sharp. A later start time for all our men. They've asked for it and now they get it with road closure along the way. It's rolling road closure that follows them all the way around the course. It is uh, beautiful conditions. Uh, Mercury touching now on 25 degrees Celsius right here at the uh, Germiston Lake uh, in Okureleni. Uh, a per picture perfect day considering it is autumn. Uh, but this race does take place on the very first Sunday of May every year, making it the biggest autumn race in Johannesburg. In fact, on the rest of the continent. Well, the riders have set out on their 100 kilometer routes before coming back for their last 30 kilometers of racing. Uh, let's join the action as we speak uh, and we'll take you through every as we go along. My name is Owen Honey. I'll be your race commentator for the rest of the day and remember prize giving does take place thereafter. About 16,000 Rand for our race winner today, 8,000 Rand for six, second place and only 4,000 Rand for third. It does pay all the way down the prize category list for the top 10. While, meanwhile, there's a uh, UCI points up for grabs. 30 UCI points for our race winner today which will go in quite valuable not only for the rider but the team as well in terms of continental success. So uh, we'll have uh, lots of racing for you. Uh, already this morning, Carla Orbitals are winning for Team Demicon in the women's race. Second place was Marushka Matia and Joanna van Winkel took uh, the uh, third place and the third step on the podium in the women's race over 100 kilometers. It's fast, furious racing. That winning time, just a fraction under two and a half hours of racing for them. And it was great, fast, furious racing nonetheless. Other teams to look out for Team uh, TEG or Team TEG. Uh, they're a continental team based out of Pretoria. They've got some strong riders in there. It's team Pro Touch as well. They've just come back from uh, Malaysia where they've been plying their trade for uh, the uh, Tour of Malaysia and uh, Tour de Langkawi, I should call it. But uh, so we've got some decent riders nonetheless in this 1.2 UCI categorized event. And it all comes to you courtesy of uh, virtual uh, Productions who bring you this live coverage. We're sending out our cameras uh, out on the motorbikes uh, to follow all the action and to bring every bit of it live to you. We'll be joining those uh, cameras shortly as they're heading on out. Uh, they're just uh, finishing off, dumping uh, what was uh, left from the women's race and then they'll bring you live coverage of the men's race so far. But they've rolled out uh, just a few minutes ago. So uh, plenty of coverage uh, still to come this afternoon. We expect a winning time of just uh, less than uh, two hours and 20 minutes. Uh, I think Nolan Hoffman won last year's race which is slightly shorter in the time of 2 hours 17 minutes. They've got a couple more kilometers to do this year in order to make it a UCI categorized event. Uh, it gets uh, 1.2 status this year. Remember it does start at World Tour level, then it goes to 1.1 followed by 1.2. So it's in the third tier, but it doesn't really matter. Those UCI points are very, very valuable to us because we need to get those points in order to qualify riders to race at World Championships and also to race at the Olympic Games 2020 taking place in Tokyo, Japan uh, next year. Our camera bike has just left, so uh, give him a few minutes before he catches up. I'm sure we'll have lots of coverage for you in the, the next few minutes. Stay where you are, don't go anywhere, and maybe grab a cup of coffee, whatever your favorite beverage is, and uh, remember to stay with us for at least uh, three and a half hours of coverage of racing right here from the 100 Cycle Challenge. Welcome back to our live coverage of the 100 Cycle Challenge uh, brought to you by the city of Okureleni. This uh, broadcast could not be uh, put together without uh, our sponsors who have come on board. And just to take you through some of the sponsors, of course, it is proudly brought to you by the city of Okureleni as we're based in Germiston, right next to the Germiston Lake, which is this beautiful backdrop you see behind me. Uh, also, a big thank you to our technical partner, that is Cycling South Africa, uh, to Tame Times, to... Uh, 
the support of SA Talent, the road cycling series, also UCI. Uh, there's also the Dot Cloud Digital Cycle Lab, Cycle Schwer, Virtual Productions, who put together this live production to the Laser Boutique and uh, Positive Sports Solutions. Thank you very much for all coming on board and making this such a uh, fantastic event so far. It started this morning at uh, 6 o'clock with these shorter distances and then continued with the 100 kilometer event led out by the elite woman. Uh, the veteran men they went, went out after them, followed by the open batches. They started at about 20 past seven this morning. We already had our first female come across the line in Carla, Carla Orbitals of Team Demicon. Uh, she was followed home by Marushka Matia, finishing second place once again for the second year running. And uh, it was uh, Joanna van Winkel for Santon City. Uh, they, uh, Cycle Nation, they finished in third place, the last place on the podium. So those are the top three in the women. We wait now for coverage of our men's race, which is currently underway. It starts at 11 o'clock sharp. And remember, it is a 1.2 categorized UCI event. So there's use, uh, useful points up for grabs, 30 points for our winner. And all those points get allocated towards not only the individual, but the team and the country as well in order to qualify us for World Championships and also for Olympic Games taking place in Tokyo, Japan next year. So it is valuable points and putting on events like this is all important for South African cyclists as well as our country too. Uh, we spoke to Mike Bradley a bit earlier on and he told us the importance of uh, all the points that gets tallied together and uh, that all gets put into a bank in order to get as many riders qualified as possible to race over at World Championships and uh, the Olympic Games. And uh, Mike Bradley pointing out this this is one of the major events on the calendar. So making sure that we will be bringing you live coverage of one of the greatest races on the calendar. And it is an autumn race taking place on the second or the first Sunday of uh, May every year. It's only the second edition of this race. Last year, we had a total tally of about 3,000, 3,800 cyclists. So this year, it is a... Uh, significantly grown to over 5,000 cyclists so far so great to see all the action and then what happened was the uh, pro men got a later start they've been asking for a late start for many a year and finally they've got it just like the European uh, racing they get to start at about 11 o'clock just before lunch finishing just after the luncheon break then so we'll get uh, live coverage of that I believe our cameras are up and running and are out on the course let's see if we can get live pictures from those cameras uh, we're still catching up with them in fact uh, we had to uh, delay one of our camera bikes to go out there to bring you that live coverage as uh, needed to put some very important equipment and batteries in place otherwise we won't be able to get you those pictures at all but it won't be too long before we bring you live pictures of the pro bunch out on the course uh, Nolan Hoffman is the defending champion who won the inaugural race last year in 2 hours 17 minutes remember it was a shorter distance only 100 kilometers this year they have to compete over 130 kilometers so they race over the regulation 100 kilometers and when they get back to Jermison Lake they have to complete six laps of a five kilometer circuit bringing the racing to the people and they get to see criterion racing I guess in close uh, proximity they get to see their Euros racing up close and personal with all the cyclists still streaming in from their 100 kilometer races so far our second motorbike is on its way out to meet up with the peloton and as soon as we have all those pictures for you we will put it up on screen so stay where you are like I said to you I hope you've got your favorite beverage uh, snacks ready to take you through all the coverage this afternoon of uh, the uh, 100 cycle challenge brought to you by the city of Ukuruleni. Well, we do apologize about uh, the lack of pictures from the 100 cycle challenge but we tell you what we've got good news the cameras have caught up with the main pellets and are about to bring you those pictures live we've got 21 riders in the breakaway they're probably about a minute ahead of the chase pack and uh, so it is a large group of riders that went away just after the nature reserve and uh, so we're getting that and they close uh, they've gone through Heidelberg and should be on their way back on the R23 shortly and uh, 20, 21 riders out in front so it's quite a large group and most of the tweets are coming through from uh, the office guru team uh, who have uh, a couple of riders in the breakaway in fact there are four riders in that large group of 21 riders that have gone clear Keegan Goodleston, uh, uh, Mark Pritzen uh, as well as uh, 
uh, Alex Warstel and JP Lloyd. Uh, so those are the four riders from Office Guru team that are in that breakaway. Um, we say thank you to them for keeping us updated with what happened there. Uh, it was a large group of riders that went away, about 14 of them, and then a chase pack came along and caught them from behind. Uh, so making 21 riders out in front so far after uh, 60 kilometers or so of racing. So we're getting our cameras now into position. The links are up. Everything seems to be sorted. It's just a massive time to bring you those visuals of what's happening in the 2019 uh, 100 cycle challenge uh, brought to you by the city of Okuruleni. We say thank you very much to our sponsors and for your patience back home uh, in trying to sort out all of these issues that we've had. But uh, tell you what, we're back up and running and should bring those pictures to you shortly. So uh, that is the race situation at the moment. 21 riders out in front with a minute gap on the chase pack, but still plenty of racing to go. As we all know, it's 130 kilometers long this uh, this whole entire route 100 kilometers and then they get to a circuit of which they have to do six laps of a five kilometer circuit making up 30 kilometers and uh, that was where we're going to see most of the racing the wind has picked up ever so slightly here at the finishing line in germiston lake and uh, it's going to be uh, taking its toll whether it'll take its toll on the breakaway or whether uh, the will they work in the favor of uh, the chase pack we'll have to wait and see but the cameras are with the lead pack now and uh, we'll wait bring those pictures shortly Are we going live yet? Hello and welcome to our live coverage of the 100 Cycle Challenge. This, these are live pictures that are coming up to us from out on the course in the Pro Elite Men's Race of 130 kilometers. Unfortunately, our picture is just frozen there, but we've got 21 riders out in the lead. And uh, these are the uh, pictures from the front of the peloton then with uh, 21 riders out in front there. A number of riders from Pro Touch Cycling and uh, a couple from the Office Guru team as well. So Clint Hendricks in there for uh, Pro Touch Cycling and uh, also Jade Julius. So a number of riders from that team in there. And uh, unfortunately our pictures just froze there as you came to us live. But uh, good news is that our cameras are with the uh, main bunch. Also in that breakaway was uh, Kelvin Bjernicke I uh, saw in there from uh, Pro Touch Cycling. So the number of riders from that team up in front there, but 21 riders, a large group to contend with. That makes riding, uh, well, it's racing very exciting as well. The good news is that our cameras are up and running right here from uh, the 100 Cycle Challenge brought to you by the city of Ukuruleni. And it's going to be a race over 130 kilometers. Our Pro Elite men racing for valuable uh, UCI points as this is a UCI uh, 1.2 UCI categorized one day race and it is also a 16,000 rand up for grabs for our winner today so those are our live pictures then from the breakaway out in front they on the R23 making their way back up to Boxburg and there's been plenty of attacking left right and center uh, from all our riders in front there 21 riders not happy with the break the makeup of that group and have been attacking each other quite a bit also good to see some of the other major teams in the mix as well and we'll get you updated with all the race numbers as we come and get along with it but uh Good to see Team ACDC Luso also up in the front there. Team TG, our Pro Continental team, also uh, near the front of affairs. It looks like it is uh, Jade Julius is in the mix. Uh, race number three. Number 13, and uh, that is Jason Oerstazen. Team TG, and here comes uh, ACDC Luso again, once again on the attack. So. Uh, Furious amount of attacking taking place on that R23 as they make their way up to the N17 highway, which they'll then make a left onto. And that indicates that they're uh, about 40 k's out from the start finishing line. Remember, they still got another 30 kilometers uh, to contend with once they come to the start finishing line because they got that five uh, or six laps of a five kilometer circuit to contend with. Team TG again going on the attack and making sure that they 
uh, had their presence felt in front and that's Gustav Basson near the front in the colors of Team TEG. We thank you so much for your patience in getting these live pictures to you. And that is uh, Clint Hendricks that goes in the attack once again. So they're trying to split this up as much as possible, Pro Touch Cycling. Jade Julius, that looks like Nolan Hoffman there. Clint Hendricks, the Commonwealth bronze medalist. Nolan Hoffman, defending champion, goes through in the colors of Team Enza. Jay Julius now coming through. The three riders out in front combining well together to try and break this up as much as possible. Nolan Hoffman riding with a 105 on his bike. Here's Jay Julius coming through now. So the 21 riders are trying to split it up quite, in, um, quite a bit in front there. This is the... Difficult section up to the N17. It drags all the way from the bottom to the top nearly. No time for any respite or relaxation. And the pressure is definitely on right now at the front of affairs. So we had a large group of 21 riders that went clear of the main peloton. They had about a 60 second gap. We need confirmation of the uh, gap to the main peloton. Looks like a group of about uh, eight or nine riders that have sprung clear from the 21 riders. So the pace is definitely up and uh, going at a furious tempo out in front there. So that is the latest picture we have for you from uh, the 100 cycle challenge. So good to see and thank you for all your support in trying to keep it. Uh, we're trying to keep you updated as much as possible. We apologize for the breakup in pictures of that as it is incoming from the course. And some areas, not, uh, not great coverage, unfortunately, as the links keep on falling over. But that's the way technology goes sometimes. Sometimes it's with you, sometimes it's against you. And unfortunately, it worked very well this morning with the women's race. But uh, with the pro elite men's race, it seems to be struggling ever so slightly. Uh, thanks to James Barnes and uh, to Taryn also that have sent their messages, Taryn uh, Tiernason. Uh, but uh, we are bringing you those live pictures as we get them coming along then. So nine riders going clear of initial group of 21 riders that were in that breakaway. I believe there's not many riders in the main peloton at all, so they may have given up the ghost, and that could be the race near the front of affairs so far. That is uh, the makeup of the race so far. So uh, nine riders followed by a group of about uh, 13 others, and then uh, another larger group further back down the road. So it's going to come down to a mano a mano style finish right here at the Germiston Lake as uh, several riders will battle it out for the honors in the second edition of the 100 Cycle Challenge brought to you by the city of Kuruleni. Uh, we again we apologize for the lack of pictures there, but as soon as it is back up and running again, we'll bring that to you. Uh, tell you what, Nolan Hoffman is in that group. And there we go. There's our visuals once again as we get the links up and running. This looks like the second group trying to chase down the nine riders out in front. And in front of them, they're coming towards the... Uh, looks like it could be the carousel. I beg your pardon, not carousel, but one of the uh, entertainment areas, Big Top Arena in front of them. And they are definitely on the R23. Heading towards the N17. So that's the makeup of the group right now, Team Pro Touch Cycling. Plenty of riders in there, they're talking to each other, making sure they understand what the tactics will be. And you can see that long undulation as they make their way to the top. And just in front of them, once they go through this intersection, it's a few hundred meters before they'll take that slipway onto the N17 highway. And from there, it's about 17 kilometers to the finishing line. And then they'll start that uh, six laps of a five kilometer circuit around Germiston Lake. 
And those are the pictures. Unfortunately, we break away once again. Thank you for joining us. My name is Owen Honey, race commentator today to bring you live visuals then of what is the 2019 100 cycle challenge brought to you by the city of Guraleni in Germiston is where we're situated at the moment. And we're trying to get those links uh, up and running, uh, just getting the visuals coming through. And unfortunately, they're breaking up ever so slightly. So we're trying to sort that out as best as possible. But uh, so far, 21 riders all together at the front of the race. Uh, one of the big teams that's trying to drive things at the front is Team Pro Touch Cycling. They've got a number of riders in there, including Jay Julius and uh, Clint Hendricks, the bronze medalist from the Commonwealth Games uh, last year. And uh, he's right up there and one of the favorites coming into today's race. The race does suit him. It's fairly flat, long drags, and the wind uh, might take its toll. But once you get into this highway section, I think that's where we're going to see a lot of the racing taking place. And also around this uh, uh, 30 kilometer circuits that they need to, or well, five kilometer circuits, they need to do six laps of that to try and sort themselves out for the race win today. 30 UCI points on offer and also 16,000 Rand for the race winner today. It is all important. This is a 1.2 UCI categorized one day race. And uh, so plenty on offer and plenty at stake today. Uh, we wait for those pictures to come back. Uh, but right now we take you back to the uh, start line visuals, which are more stable than the cameras out on the course. Let's take a look at what's going on. There's more riders are still completing their 100 kilometer race, which started quite early this morning already. Those are the pictures, as you can see, that's the start banner where they started off this morning and the finish on the other side of the routes. So this is the 100 cycle challenge, the second edition. It uh, takes place on the first Sunday of uh, every May. And it is the biggest autumn race in Johannesburg. And there's our live visuals again of uh, the 21 riders out in front of the main uh, peloton. They have a huge gap, a time advantage, I believe, over the chase pack. And looks like this is going to, going to be where it is decided. So the riders are now on to the N17 highway. Number 94, and that is Tokazani Mkhlangu, who finished second uh, just last uh, week in the Tour de Urban. And uh, one rider that you need to look out for from uh, Team Sampada. A great rider, not a bad rider at all. He finished second in that sprint to Steven Finieren just last week in Tour de Urban, and uh, we need to watch out for him. He's got a good turn of speed on him. Small, slightly bold rider, stocky rider, in fact, and uh, he's able to finish off a race. This is the front of affairs as we see uh, what's happening near the front there. Team Pro Cycling, Pro Touch Cycling near the front. Team Enzo also up there couple of riders from ACDC Luso, Team TG also in the mix and they're driving towards the finishing line. So a long way to go in the uh, racing. And these undulations are taking it out of the riders legs. So once they get to the start finishing line, still another 30 kilometers to go. They must be about 10 kilometers out now from uh, the start finish area where they started off at 11 o'clock this morning. Driving it very hard on the front in order to keep the tempo as high as possible, in order not to get caught from behind and also to nullify any of the attacks. That is the name of the game right now. So that's Team Pro Touch driving it on the front. They've got a number of fast riders in there. The likes of uh, Clint Hendricks, Jay Julius, David Maria from Team Enzo also up front there. Looking after his sprinter, Nolan Hoffman. So all the main protagonists that we expected to be at the front of affairs are there. And that is good to see as uh, we come back to our live uh, studio position at Germiston Lake. And uh, we're going to get the second camera also to go back to see where is the main peloton and give us a bit of a time check on that. But right now, a couple of teams up there, Pro Touch, uh, Team Pro Touch Cycling up there, the UCI Continental Team, Team TEG is the other UCI Continental Team. Uh, team Offers Guru got three or four riders also up there. And I haven't seen much from them just yet. And there they are in second place as one of their riders. 
and uh, looks like it could be Diddle and Girdleston. And uh, they'll be trying to dry things up, and that could be Alex uh, Vorstel also. So they had uh, two riders in the initial breakaway, and then two more riders came across in uh, the second group. They got they came across to make up the 21 riders out in front. Out of the saddle, just to get a bit of respite on this one uh, small undulation. There's a bit of a gap open up there, but closed down fairly quickly once again. And here comes an attack from uh, Pro Touch. Really driving it along here on the highway section, going along at a tremendous pace and set speeds touching on uh, over 40 kilometers an hour up this drag. And uh, the windy conditions has abated, which will help the cyclists keep the pace as high as possible. There we go, Team TG in the mix. The UCI Continental team based out in Pretoria, at the University of Pretoria, in fact. So that's uh, number 104 at the front. That's Stephen van Yerden, who's one of the other main protagonists in this group, a winner of Twitter Urban last week. Good to see him up there. Man, that's in fine form at the moment. Number 15 is uh, Louis Fisser from Team TG. And they'll be chasing those uh, valuable UCI points today. Louis Fisser, slightly bolt rider, good climber. 22 being uh, Travis Barrett from the team office guru good breed of youngsters coming through from that uh, academy set up by nick white steven van Yeden is a man that's in fine form and don't look out for him maybe if this comes down to a bunch sprint finish they've got two sprinters up front there nolan hoffman and steven van Yeden. more riders now coming through from the office guru team AC DC Luso, Team T TG, and there's Nolan Hoffman going through there in the colours of Team Enza. And he's going to be a marked man, no doubt about it. If it comes down to a bunch sprint finish, look out for him. He is the defending champion of the 100 cycle challenge, winning the inaugural edition. See Nolan is riding on the wheel of Clint Hendricks there. Those two riders know each other very well, former teammates. It's uh, Kent Main, also a man in fine form. Won the East uh, Rank Classic just last week up at altitude. Former rider for the Dimension Data. Continental team. There's Nolan Hoffman coming back for water bottles as well. So the temperature is extremely warm at the moment. It's uh, touching on 25, 26 degrees Celsius, and these cyclists will feel it as well in the tailwind, especially. He's asking for a bottle from the Pro Touch cycling team. These guys looking after each other. Team Enza may not have. Uh, a team vehicle back there but uh, this is a gentlemanly agreement among some of the teams if they don't have a team or cl close by they will look after each other they counting on each other working as a cohesive unit at the moment to try and make sure they stay clear of the chase peloton and i think this is where the race will be won from today david maria in picture 
Man, that never says die. He's like a bull terrier. Just keeps on going and going. Doesn't know when to stop. Number triple one is Casper uh, Kruger riding for the ACDC Lusso team. Number 23, that's Alex uh, Vorstel, followed by his teammate just in front of him, uh, Travis Barrett, Stephen van Yerden, Kelvin Bienneke on the right-hand side just dropping out of picture. So they're just driving on a tempoed pace here and then nothing too serious. Stephen van Yerden on the front here, keeping the pace nice and high. So Team Enza, three riders out in front, David Maria, Steven van Yerden and their main sprinter and defending champion Nolan Hoffman. So Travis Barrett just behind Steven van Yerden. Office Guru looking very good at the moment. Numbers out in front. That's a large group of 21 riders out in front here. And still Stephen Van Yerden driving the pace at the front. A bit of a tailwind that uh, they're experiencing at the moment. They're inside the last 10 kilometers to the start finishing line. So 40 kilometers to go of racing in total. Casper Kruger going through there now. ACDC Lusso. Team based out to the south of Johannesburg. Gets into his tuck position. Looks like uh, Ryan Terry also in there. Team uh, Bazani. So three riders there, just getting a bit of a gap on the rest of the breakaway. Are the legs starting to tell? It's just, just games being played out further back. Stephen van Yerden closes the gap down. All right, it looks like there is another rider behind him. Travis Barrett from the uh, office guru team. Keep on looking over their shoulders to see what the gap is. So maybe there is a bit of a bit of daylight between these four riders out in front and the chase pack. As Ryan Terry puts his head down and tries to drive the pace up once again. Stephen Finierden comes through, takes his turn out in front. Alex Barrett is uh, taking his time. Or Tra Tra Travis Barrett, I beg your pardon. So they're still picking up riders that uh, started their race this morning just after seven o'clock and they're still out on the route. These are the stragglers at the back on the main uh, race that took place this morning from seven o'clock. Unfortunately, we just lose our pictures there again. But 21 riders out in front of the 2019 uh, 100 cycle challenge brought to you by the city of Okuruleni. Uh, four riders just showing their face near the front of affairs there. It was uh, Travis Barrett, Alex Vostel, Casper Kruger, uh, Stephen van Yerden. Those were some of the riders just near the front of affairs of that 21 man breakaway group. But don't you worry, there's still uh, plenty of sprinters just behind them and they would want to close down that gap as quickly as possible. And uh, here we go, back to uh, pictures. A bit of slow motion going on there and there we go, back up to speed. So those uh, riders are just chasing them down. Kelvin Bienneke from Pro Touch Cycling coming through picture right now. 
unfortunately our picture is just falling over there ever so slightly. We rely on cell phone signals to bring you these uh, visuals. It's all connected and when the, the uh, I guess, it uh, gets a bit too busy. The signals uh, across Johannesburg and especially in the East Rand, it just loses signal ever so slightly. So as soon as that gets back up again, it reconnects our links. And there we go, pictures back up again. So the network just getting slightly busy there as they make their way along the N17 highway. Is uh, Clint Hendricks in picture right now, number three. Closely marked by a rider from ACDC, Luso. And that could it be Casper uh, Kruger. And these are visuals from our start finishing line. They'll be coming th through here shortly in the next uh, 15 minutes or so to start the first of six laps around this five kilometer circuit taking them around here. This is a 1.2 categorized UCI race, one day race. 30 points on offer, UCI points on offer to the first rider that crosses the line. Plus he'll get himself a check of 16,000 Rand. All the time the riders are taking in sustenance, making sure their energy reserves stay topped up. And at this point of the race, it's vitally important that they drink enough, eat enough. The experience here of Jay Julius at the back. In fact, that is uh, Reynard Butler, who's in the group as well from uh, Pro Touch Cycling. Another fast man when it comes to a finish. He hasn't been doing much near the front, so uh, hanging in there at the back. Number 94, man, they finished second place just last week at the Tour de Urban. And that is uh, Tokazani Maklangu. Showing his experience, taking in his uh, gels. He's shown great promises, youngster, from uh, the team Sampada. So it's strung out at the moment, but it's a tailwind as they're dodging the cones out on the N17, one of the lanes reserved for cyclists only. All right, Stephen van Yerden, Kent Main, Nolan Hoffman. So Protouch Cycling looking pretty good there with a number of riders in the group and here comes an attack by the looks of things from Stephen van Yerden who's going to the front of affairs again to drive their pace. So they're not happy with the makeup of the group and trying to whittle it down to a smaller group it makes it more manageable and easy to drive. And there we go. There's the attack off the front. Nobody responding just yet. And that looks like Stephen van Heerden has gone off the front of the 20 man, 21 man breakaway. Who is going to respond to try and close it down? We apologize about the picture breakup, but that's how sometimes it goes with technology. It doesn't always go your way on the day. We had a couple of technical problems early on, but we've uh, tried to sort that out as best as possible for you and to bring you these like pictures from the 2019 100 cycle challenge and there we go pictures up again Jake Julius on the attack and uh, Steven van Yerden two riders uh, from Pro Touch and Enza respectively they've decided to give it a go off the front of affairs Commissaire pulls up alongside them just to let them know they've got a slender gap I don't think it's too much at the moment you can see they're driving a big gear there both of them especially Steven van Yerden who's got tremendous power. The two of them will work together at this moment in time. No time to really mess about as they try to build their gap over the chase pack. Two seasoned professionals on the South African circuit. Jay Julius from the Western Cape. Raced uh, a lot in Belgium as a youngster before settling back here in South Africa once again. Stephen van Yerden comes from a track cycling background. So a man that's got a good turn of speed. We raced on Team BCX last year. Unfortunately, that team folded at the end of 2018. So they then formed a team. They lost their sponsors at the last minute and formed a team DNS. Headed up by Nolan Hoffman. And Enza came on board just before the Cape Town Cycle Challenge to take them on as a fully-fledged team. So a big thank you to Team uh, to Enza for coming on board at the 11th hour to try and bail them out of a bit of trouble financial trouble especially for this team some big names in team Enza Stephen van Nieren, Nolan Hoffman, David Maria just to name but a few up front there and 
Also in that team is uh, Opa Mulaleke, Isaac Madao, and uh, Tulani Ngenge. Uh, they find themselves uh, out the back and in the main group. So two men out in front in the uh, 2019 100 cycle challenge. Jade Julius from Team Pro Touch on his wheel. That's Steven van Yerden from uh, Team Enza. I'll try and get a time gap if our camera can turn out. Just to have a look back to see what this uh, gap is. As they make their way towards what will be the off ramp. That will take them back to the start finishing line. So they must be within the last uh, five kilometers or so. That's our lead vehicles in front of them, followed with the road marshals. Big thank you to all the road marshals that have made this a safe trip for them. Rolling road closure for our pro cyclists. Once they get off the highway, they will open the highway completely for all motorists. And then uh, the riders out in front will negotiate six laps of a five kilometer circuit around Germiston Lake to make up that last 30 kilometers of racing. So Jake Julius goes through to take another turn on the front as they go past some of the stragglers from uh, the earlier race. The fun ride, 100 kilometer fun ride for some of the uh, earlier riders that started their race this morning uh, just after half past seven. Still find themselves out on the route at uh, three minutes past one in the afternoon. So Stephen van Yerden. Sitting on the wheel of Jay Julius there. And this could be a dangerous move because uh, they both have teammates further back, which means their teammates won't be doing any work in the chase pack. They'll be sitting on, letting the other team teams do the work out in front, tiring them out. And that could just create a bit of a launch pad once those guys are tied to launch a counter-attack and ride across. Once they take the next off-ramp, they swing off and turn right back underneath the N17 and make their way up a, a bit of a climb towards the start finishing area. Goes up for about a, just over a kilometer, close to two kilometers long. And then they drop down the other side one kilometer to the start finishing line. And then they start those six laps of five kilometers each. Stephen Infinieden is looking like a man that's in fine form at the moment. So is Jay Julius, looking very calm, cool and collected. One water bottle on his bike, one juice bottle with what is uh, his preferred carbohydrate drink. Both of them riding deep section carbon wheels. And again, we apologize about the picture break up there. And there we go. That's the off ramp in front of them. Now they'll swing off. So about 500 meters to the intersection where they'll make a right hand turn. And from there, three kilometers to the finishing line where we stationed at the moment. Fantastic road marshalling here today from our road rangers and all the voluntary marshals out on the route. We thank them very much for keeping all our riders safe and sound today. Second edition of the 100 cycle challenge. Back to our live pictures and these two riders out in front. I'm sure the pressure will be on uh, Team TEG, who don't have a rider in this two-man breakaway, as well as Team Offers Guru. Those will be the two main teams that will be doing all the chasing right now in order to try and bring these two men back into their fold. And here is the right-hand bend, and then they make their way up the undulation, Three kilometers there away from the start finishing line. And you can see a drop in speed as the road immediately kicks upward. Big thank you to everybody who's joined us for this live streaming of the 2019 100 cycle challenge. 
Stephen Van Heerden, mouth wide open, sucking in all that oxygen possible. He's just come up from uh, sea level, where he won at the Twitter Urban. Now having to race at altitude 1,600 meters above sea level. Jay Julius looking the more comfortable of the two right now. They started this morning at 11 o'clock exactly. And they're probably about five minutes away from the start finishing line. So 100 kilometers would have been completed in about uh, less than two and a quarter hours. That's a good turn of speed. And then they've still got 30 kilometers remaining of a fairly flat route around Germiston Lake. Big effort from these two riders, Jay Julius on the front, Steven Van Heerden in the slipstream. Riding into a bit of a headwind right now, judging from uh, the flags and banners here at the start finishing line. Once they get over the crest of this hill, and that's a good indicator that you're at the top of the hill when you see a water reservoir on your left hand side, usually built at the top of a hill. That means you're almost at the top and you'll drop down shortly. And here come our two leaders. I didn't see anybody further back. So our two leaders have got a substantial lead on the chase pack led by Office Guru and Team TEG. The UCI Continental team. So this, they've gone over the top of that hill and they'll drop down to the start finishing line. Once they come through the start finishing line, I'll give you a time check as to how far they are ahead. Past the car dealerships they go. And that's going uh, be a long right hand bend in front of them. That indicates they're inside the last what kilometre. Ladies and gentlemen, here they come through the start finishing line. They go for their start of the first of six laps of a five kilometer circuit. And there go our leaders, Jay Julius and Steven van Yerden. I've started the stopwatch to see what gap they have. Stretched out to 15 seconds already. And still no chases in sight. So Stephen van Nierden, Jay Julius out in front. Time gap is more than 30 seconds by my estimation and still no sign of the chases. And I think here they come. The chases are not too far away from the start finishing line. So we go to uh, pictures of uh, Jay Julius and Stephen van Heerden out on the course. That is the Germiston Lake that you see to the, your left-hand side. And here come our chasers across the start-finishing line. Marshall leading them through. And ladies and gentlemen, that gap has grown significantly. Here they come right now. Across the line they go. And the gap is 1 minute and 3 seconds to the chase pack. And it's Offers Guru who are having to do all the chase work. One minute and three seconds is the time gap to our two leaders out in front, Jay Julius and Steven van Nierden. That's a big gap, ladies and gentlemen. Could be the difference between winning and losing this race. Remember, it is a fairly flat circuit they're going through. Six laps to be completed, five kilometers each. And still, these two share the workload out in front. For them, it won't be an all-out effort just yet. They're keeping something back, probably riding at about 85 to 90 percent. Keeping something in reserve. There's been plenty of races ridden around this Germiston Lake back in the day. My riding days, uh, we used to do plenty of races, criterium races around here. Great form of racing. There's uh, one section. This is a bit of a drag up to the top of the circuit. They then turn left, back round again. They do a carriage way and then they make another left hand turn. So it's uh, just left hand turns they'll be negotiating. Under the bridge they go. 
And here comes the rest of the chase pack. Bradley Borgitta at the front of the chase pack, the remaining group. That looks like the remnants of the main peloton across the finishing line. They're about four minutes behind our leaders. Only a group of about nine riders in the remnants of the main peloton. So it looks like the race has been decided. And if those riders get lapped, they get pulled off the circuit. Only 20 riders need to finish today. And there's the remnants of uh, our convoy as they go through. Jay Julius uh, just about to clean his sunglasses, taking it off and making sure he uses the water bottle to clean off the sweat that just builds up and accumulates inside your sunglasses. Just your eyelashes tend to pick up your sweat as it falls down from your brow and uh, flicks it up onto the sunglasses and can it become a bit irritating if you're not able to see clearly. But the true professional he is, he just takes off his sunglasses, clears uh, the sweat from his sunglasses by using the clean water that he has on his bike. Taking long turns on the front there, Stephen van Yedden on the front as they head on down the circuit. So one minute and three seconds, the gap between Stephen van Yedden, Jay Julius and the chase pack. Some of the riders uh, just crossing the line now have been pulled off by the race commissaires as they are too far behind our two leaders out of front and are likely to be lapped, meaning they're out of the race completely. And there they go, left-hand turn onto the dual carriageway just in front of uh, the airport, the Rand Airport, or stands to be corrected on that. Thank you. So they go through past the airport, the south of Johannesburg at Germiston Lake. Stephen van Yerden and Jay Julius are two riders out in front. They've got a minute and three second gap over the chase pack. And when they came across the line, the chase pack, it was the uh, office guru riders that were leading the chase pack. But uh, Clint Hendricks was disrupting the chase, sitting in second wheel, making sure that they don't get too much of an advantage. The office guru riders into that lead. And here comes the ProTouch team vehicle. Tony Harding will be in that vehicle, pulling up alongside them. And that looks like the team vehicle also for Steven van Yerden. Pulls up alongside them, throws his bottle aside and you'll get another water bottle here as they make their way inside the last two or three kilometers. In fact, a few kilometers away from the start finishing line once again, they're going to make a left turn in front and they'll come across the start finishing line once again. So this is inside the last few hundred meters towards the finishing line, ladies and gentlemen, and we'll get another time check once they come across the line. That is the start finishing banner as they go through. Start the stopwatch again. And they've got a pretty handy lead, Jay Julius and Stephen van Yerden. Starting the second of six laps. The last time they came across the start finishing line, they had a gap of one minute and three seconds exactly.
stopwatch has just gone past the 40 second mark now and still no sign of the chasers and in fact they make their way around the top corner just before the star finishing line and here they come down the main finishing straight and we'll give you a time check shortly and this is the chase pack Alphas Guru still on the front and it is one minute and six seconds so despite Alphas Guru sending uh, numerous riders to the front of the chase pack Stephen van Heeren and Jay Julius still holding that uh, gap and in fact they sent, extended it out to a minute and six seconds so from minute and three seconds to a minute and six seconds is the gap they have over the chase pack Jay Julius just looking over his shoulder to see if he can see that chase pack led by Alphas Guru So only 21 riders left in this race, in fact, if you count the two riders in front plus the 19 riders behind them, that will make up your tw top 20 riders. And we thank you so much for joining our live coverage of this fantastic race so far. This is the 2019 uh, 100 Cycle Challenge brought to you by the city of Kuruleni. Stephen Finihira swings off the front and uh, swings in behind JD Julius. Trying to tuck in and get as much slipstream as possible, recover those legs for his next turn on the front. Still a long way to go when they cross the uh, start finishing line. They've still got 20 kilometers to go. So this race is not over by a long shot. And there's Stephen van Heeren calling for a time check. If he could hear me, he would hear me telling him it's a minute and six seconds. He wants to hear it from the commissaire. Commissaire comes up alongside him. And is about to give him his time check now. So it's over a minute. Big thank you to all our viewers who have joined us now on uh, Facebook and on our live feed on the 100cyclechallenge.co.za webpage. Pressure now on Office Guru. Here comes the rest of the chasers. A number of riders from Team Sampare in there. Lutanda Kaka also just going across the line now. I think he's given up the ghost. He knows the race is done and dusted. Okay. The speed limits around here 60 kilometers an hour. And tell you what, these guys are traveling probably about 50 k's an hour on their bicycles after 110 kilometers of racing these two riders out in front Jay Julius, Steven van Heerden Steven van Heerden <laughs> feeling around in his back pockets to see what nutrition he's still got left over He'll make sure that he takes everything in possible to keep him going. Vitally important that you stay hydrated, take in that uh, fast burning carbohydrates. Out of the saddle, he gets once again to get a bit of respite out of the saddle, back in. They make the left hand turn at the top of the circuit, airport to their right hand side. Tell you what, these riders are doing a fantastic job in front, Jay Julius and uh, Stephen Van Heeren. Never once did they complain about not wanting to take a turn. They're all in it together. They know at this point in time, it's vitally important they work together. And then only once they've got a gap, duel it out probably in the last two kilometers or so, knowing they have a substantial gap. So that's the Rand Airport to their right-hand side. And shortly they'll make the left hand turn down this main start finishing straight and we'll give you a time check the last time check was a minute and six seconds that we had
One of the TEG riders just going past me there. And he's given up the ghost already. Live pictures from the 100 Cycle Challenge 2019 brought to you by the city of Kuruleni. Two riders out in front, Jade Julius from Team ProTouch and uh, Stephen Fadnieden from Team Enza. They make their left turn now to the main start, finishing straight. And we're going to give you another time check as they're about to start their next lap of racing. They go across the line, ladies and gentlemen. I've started the stopwatch and I'd look to my left-hand side as they go past. That is Jade Julius and Stephen Fadnieden. The two men that had broken clear with about uh, 40 kilometers to go. They went away on the N17 and built themselves up a substantial gap of a minute and six seconds the last time they came across the start finishing line. This is uh, their third of six laps they're about to uh, start. They're still looking pretty good, these two out in front. Jay Julius is turning over a higher cadence than Stephen van Nierden. And both of them have got a pretty decent sprint on them. But I guess if you put, put, put money on it, uh, Stephen Vierneerden is probably slightly stronger than Jay Julius when it comes to a two-man sprint. But you never know, after a lot of racing those legs and a bit of tiredness and fatigue, could just go with Jay Julius' way. And uh, we're going to start our stopwatch as the chase pack comes towards the finishing line. They go across the line now, and it has dropped now to a minute and two seconds. So they've only managed to pull back. All of four seconds, the chase pack as Team TEG go to the front and try to force the pace up and try and close the gap on our two leaders out in front. I wonder if that's a wise move to try and break away. They need to work together, Team uh, Office Guru and Team TEG. Unfortunately for them, they know that they've got uh, fast men in their company as well. The likes of Nolan Hoffman and Clint Hendricks. So if they do bring it back together again, they're just going to set it up for them. So they're trying to get one rider across there, right across a minute gap that won't be easy on a circuit like this. So the time gap, one minute and two seconds was the official time gap we had. It's remained at about that mark. And we'll keep you posted on that time difference as they come through to start uh, their fourth lap of racing for our two leaders out in So the two teams that really must start the move is uh, Team TG, our UCI Continental team based in Pretoria, and Team Office Guru, the under-23 team, which is managed by Nicholas White. They had a couple of riders in their breakaway, Dylan Girdleston, Travis uh, Barrett, Alex Vorstel, JP Lloyd was also in that group. As once again we see the team vehicle going forward from Pro Touch. And our marshals again pulling off riders as we go along. Unfortunately for some of these riders further back, they're just not going to see the front of the race again. So they've decided to pull them out. Not to interfere with any of the racing. There's 21 riders out in front. All we need is about 20 cyclists to complete this race. Well, thank you very much for joining us at the 2019 by the city of Kuruleni. 
And thank you very much for joining us. Uh, thanks to Virtual Productions that put this production together, bring you these live streaming pictures, whether you're watching on Facebook or whether you're watching on uh, the live pictures on uh, the 100cyclechallenge.co.za webpage. It is uh, two riders out in front, Jay Julius and Stephen van Yerden. Jay Julius riding for Pro Touch Cycling and uh, Stephen van Yerden in the colors of Team Enza. The two riders broke away 40 kilometers into this race, or from the finishing line, I should say, and have uh, carved their lone trail out in front. They open up a gap of a maximum gap of a minute and seven seconds, but it's been pegged back by the likes of Team TEG and uh, Office Guru, who've combined to try and narrow the gap, but it's still hovering around one minute as our third group goes across the start finishing line and they find themselves uh, about. Four minutes still back on our leaders out in front. Remember, 16,000 Rand and 8,000 Rand is the difference between first and second place. That could be the difference between our winner and first loser today. Unfortunately, Dan, we have to call it that. But will it be Jay Julius at Reigns Victorious? Or will it be Stephen Finneard? And will they be reined back in by the Chase Peloton? And then setting up another bunch sprint finish. Only time will tell. This is the third of six laps that these riders are negotiating. Five kilometer circuit, ran airport to their right hand side, also known as Jimston Airport. A number of small aircraft that fly in and out of this airport on a daily basis and a great training facility. And I believe it's a facility where some of the retired aircraft also go on to a touchdown for the very last time before just laying there. Around they come. Germiston Lake is what they're traversing at the moment on their left hand side. Stephen van Yerden sitting on the wheel of JD Julius in front. And doing long turns at both riders. J. Julius will flick his right elbow to call for Stephen van Yerden to come through. I'm happy to share the workload out in front. That is what it's all about. You may be from opposing teams, but when you get in a breakaway like this, you make sure that you work together all the time. There's a lot riding on this, and uh, your teammates are counting on you also further back in the chase pack to put in a 100% effort. We spoke about the energy consumption of these two riders and what kind of uh, effort they're putting out more than likely they're riding at about 80 to 85 percent of their full max energy so maximum and here they come into the last 500 meters they're coming around the final bend between the between us and the uh, two breakaway riders and we're going to start the stopwatch once again and uh, they come across the line and we'll give you a time check so Stephen van Heerden leads them across for lap number four of six So lap number four of six laps our two leaders are heading into. The last time check we had was a minute and two seconds as Team TEG were trying to bridge across as much as possible. It looked rather unsuccessful initially, but we wait and see if they manage to make any inroads into this one minute gap our two leaders have out in front. So here they go, our marshals lead them across the line and here comes the chase pack across the line. Again TEG on the front. 52 seconds is the time gap. 52 seconds is the time gap between our leaders. So it's steadily and slowly coming down. They closed all of 10 seconds on that last lap. 10 seconds per lap is not going to be enough unless our two leaders stop messing around in front. So far, they've shown no signs of their messing around in front. Stephen van Heerden and J.D. Julius, our two leaders out in front, have, low, have uh, broken away with 40 kilometers to go, and they're still out in front. We thank you for joining our live coverage of the 100 Cycle Challenge, brought to you by the city of Akureleni. And uh, we'll get those pictures up again. That's our MC Alistair on the right-hand side there, just calling and entertaining the crowd. 
who is standing alongside the barriers in the shade as it's pretty warm out here today 26 degrees celsius is what the mercury is saying so the last time check we had was 52 seconds between uh, jd julius Stephen van Eerden and the chase pack led once again by the uci continental team of uh, team e teg based out of the pretoria university so those are slow motion pictures then of our two leaders out in front still sharing the workload they're not messing around they know that 52 seconds is not enough to be uh, you know sitting up so they're going to be working as well together and they have so for the past 20 kilometers done that exactly that worked as a cohesive unit so if you'd like to send us any uh, comments please do so via twitter at 100 cycle is our Twitter handle that we're using today. If you're joining us, thank you so much. And if you're joining us on Facebook as well, Matt, you can also get a hold of me at, at Owen Honey is my Twitter handle, bringing you all the commentary today from this Pro Elite race in the second edition of the 100 Cycle Challenge, brought to you by the city of Akureleni. Jay Julius digs deep into his pocket again, pulls out a gel. He knows only a few kilometers left. In fact, for them, it is about 15, less than 15 kilometers remaining. Five kilometers per lap. Next time they cross the start finishing line, it will only be 10 kilometers remaining for our two leaders out in front. The road marshals then giving them a clear indication of what the time gap is. The last time the gap we had was 52 seconds. 52 seconds to our two leaders out in front with Team TG and Office Guru leading the chase pack. Scintillating racing here from Germiston Lake. And the 2019 100 cycle challenge. So J.D. Julius on the front once again, ahead of Stephen van Eerden. Our third group goes across the line and still they find themselves a long way back and not making any inroads to that chase back out in front. Another left turn at the RAN airport facilities to their right hand side. Strangely enough, uh, they're not really talking to each other, J.D. Julius and Stephen van Eerden. They know what's expected of both of them. But I'm sure they'll give each other that uh, bit of encouragement to keep on going. And there goes the Commissaire up again to uh, alongside our two leaders in front to give them an uh, indication of what the time gap is. The last one we had was 52 seconds to our chase pack. Camera swings around to the other side. <coughs> so that's our start finishing area of the 100 cycle challenge 2019 brought to you by the city of Akureleni. They inside of the last two kilometers are two leaders. Great facilities here. Plenty of food, eat, eat and drink, craft beers uh, at our race village. Great. Uh, vibe going on here live music as well to entertain the crowds and our MC Alistair also doing some great work down on the ground hit us up at at 100 cycle if you'd like to uh, interact with us There are two leaders out in front into the last kilometer they come about to hit uh, their final bend before the start finishing straight. When they get to the start finishing line, 10 kilometers remaining for our two leaders. Two laps of this five kilometer circuit around Germiston Lake. 
There's been some great battles being fought around the circuit in uh, yesteryear, the likes of Willy van Yerden, or Willy van, Willy van Yerden, that's right, and uh, also, I uh, beg your pardon, Alan van Yerden. And here they come, ladies and gentlemen, I reset my start watch, and across the line they go, our two leaders. 52 seconds was the time gap. Philly Engelbrecht is the name that eluded me just now. Some of our champions from yesteryear, Andrew McLean, who would have ridden around this dam many a time in uh, crit racing. The Germiston Classic, as they used to call it back in the day. In fact, I cut my teeth around here also in the days as a schoolboy rider. So the Transvaal Schools Academy that used to put up plenty of races around here in a closed circuit environment, making it a lot safer for the cyclists. Good to see racing around here once again. So uh, only nine kilometers left for our two leaders out in front and here come our chasers. And the time gap, ladies and gentlemen, I tell you, has been extended out. They come across the line. It's back up to a minute and 12 seconds. So it looks like the chase pack is racing for third place. A minute and 12 seconds is the gap between Stephen Van and JD Julius and uh, the chase pack. So these two riders doing a fantastic job out in front. I'm assuming that TG is not getting any assistance from Office Guru. And the equation is usually about a minute for every 10 kilometers being able to be pulled back but with uh, only one or two riders doing all the chasing in the chase back that equation has gone out the window they're into the last well and truly into the last 10 kilometers of racing JD Julius and uh, Stephen van Eerden. in fact they only got about seven kilometers remaining So into aero position he goes. Stephen from Nierden from Team Enza. JD Julius in behind him. Riding at a nice high cadence. Looking very comfortable. Difficult to pick a, a winner out of these two so far. As JD Julius riding nice like air. Looking very composed. Stephen van Nierden. We all know his pedigree on the track. The race winner just last week at the Tour de Urban. And maybe he's able to convert that into another race victory this week. Make it two wins in a row. But anything goes, and I'm assuming these guys only start attacking each other if they do so in the last five kilometers. They're not going to leave anything to chance just yet out on the routes, knowing that Team TEG is doing all the chase work. Mouth wide open there for Steven. As he makes his way back into the slipstream, stretching his back ever so slightly. He's done a lot of work in the front. So the uh, gap was stretched by a whole 20 seconds over that last lap. Last uh, five kilometers of racing was stretched out to a minute and 12 seconds from the 52 seconds it was a bit earlier on. So obviously Team e TEG just not doing enough. Making their way around the golf course section of the circuit. The next intersection they get to, they make a left-hand turn with the Rand Airport to Germiston Airport to their right-hand side. Jay Julius just looking across at the camera. This stage of the race, your mind starts playing games with you. You need to keep your wits about you at all times. It's going to come down to possibly a two-up sprint between these two riders. And boy, do they deserve it. They've done everything right. They haven't put a pedal wrong today. They went away along the N17 with 40 kilometers to go of racing and they've held their advantage over the chase pack. Down the penultimate straight they go. 
Jay Julius taking another drink of his water bottle. And yet he's still riding that high cadence. Must be touching on almost 100 revolutions per minute there. So just another seven kilometers remaining for our two leaders out in front. Seven kilometers to go. And the last time check they had was a minute and 12 seconds. Jay Julius, if you're just joining our commentary right now, Jay Julius and Stephen van Heerden were part of a 21-man breakaway group that went away early on uh, before the halfway point in the race. They started attacking each other at a furious rate coming out of Heidelberg to on their way back to the N17 highway, Boxburg area. But they stayed all together and once they got onto the N17 they were riding at a, a good tempo before Jay Julius and Stephen van Heerden slipped clear. It was uh, Stephen van Heerden that put in the initial attack and Jay Julius jumped across to him. They opened the gap up very quickly over the chase pack. And when they came across the start finishing line for the very first time, they had established a gap of a minute and two seconds over the trailing pack. And that was the start of the first of six laps for them. They managed to hold that advantage. They're on the penultimate lap of racing. When they come across the line the next time, they're going to be getting that bell, the all-important bell, to let them know they've got one lap of racing remaining, just the last five kilometers to go for our two leaders out in front. So here come our two leaders around the final bend they go. 400 meters to go to the finishing line from this corner. You can see the banner just in front of them there. Let's give you a time check. One lap to go. They get the bell in this lap. They go across the start finishing line. Stephen Finierden leading J.D. Julius across the line there. So one lap remaining for our two leaders out in front. Unfortunately, no bell going off there, but they know exactly as from uh, the MC Alistair letting them know they do have one lap remaining. Five kilometers. That's all between them and... Uh, the victory today, 16,000 Rand for first place, 8,000 Rand for second place. It's a big jump. And the difference in points also, 30 points for our winner, UCI points in this UCI 1.2 categorized one day classic. 25 points for second place, 10 points, only, uh, 20 points, I beg your pardon, for third place, 15 for fourth, 10 for fifth place, only five points for sixth, three for seventh, and one point each for eighth all the way through to 10th place today. And our top 20 riders getting prize money as well. And here comes the chase pack. Across the line they go, minutes and four seconds. So ladies and gentlemen, I think they're not going to close that gap. It's all done and dusted. Our two riders out in front are hopefully going to keep that advantage. Unless they start playing cat and mouse games out in front. But these are two seasoned professionals. I don't think they're going to do anything like that just yet. Stephen van Heerden is just coming off a great race victory at the Tour de Urban last week. J.D. Julius, a race winner of his own right, racing in the colors of Team Pro Touch Cycling. Also a Pro Continental team and uh, J.D. Julius was doing uh, duty at the Tour de Lenkawi not so long ago. A few weeks ago he was racing in Malaysia in a Pro Continental race there. So they've only got four kilometers to go for these two leaders out in front. And in fact, they're uh, well inside that uh, fourth kilometer of racing. And still, they swap positions out in front, sharing the workload. Stephen van Heerden drops uh, gear again. Slightly heavy gear, so he's laboring ever so slightly. I wonder if that is a sign of heavy legs. Here comes the commissaire alongside them. He's going to tell them they've got a minute and four seconds advantage on the start finishing line. That was their last time check they had. Minute and four seconds. JD Julius is looking like a man that might uh, be looking a lot fresher between these two. 
difficult to call it, is the man in front, Stephen Van Heerden, bluffing ever so slightly. Just looking like he's laboring. Is he sending that message out to J.D. Julius? It's all about bluffing at this stage of the race. Who's got the better legs? These riders know each other very well, Stephen Van Heerden and J.D. Julius. They also come from a similar racing background. They raced with each other for many a year. And they come around towards the uh, golf course section of the course. J.D. Julius takes the lead once again. Stephen Van Heerden looking over his shoulder. He's clearing a bit of phlegm from his throat. I'm sure those bottles of his have been uh, sucked dry already. See, J.D. Julius again on that very light cadence, turning the pedals over, looking a little more comfortable out of the two in front. And the team vehicle for Stephen Van Heerden comes up alongside him. Just making sure he doesn't need anything. I don't think there'll be any feeding allowed at this point of the race. But he's just trying to give him some encouragement to tell him maybe he's got this race. He's got it. He doesn't have to worry about anything from behind. All he needs to do is concentrate out on the right in front of him, J.D. Julius. This is the last rise they're going to be negotiating. Past the golf course they go. It's a slight rise towards the top intersection. They turn left at Ran Airport. And there's the golf course alongside him on their left hand side. So look at that cadence. JD Julius riding a lighter rate. And there's the left hand bend at the top of the course. We end to the last three kilometers of racing. In fact, Close to two kilometers left of racing here at the 2019 100 Cycle Challenge. Brought to you by the city of Akuraleni. It's been fantastic racing so far. Two riders left out in front. It's going to be a two-up sprint for the victory today. Stephen van Heerden in the colors of Team Enza. And uh, JD Julius from Pro Touch Cycling. Those are two leaders out in front. Who's it going to be between these two? 16,000 Rand, 8,000 Rand is what they're racing for. And 30 UCI points and 25 points respectively so JD Julius and Steven van Yerden here we go ladies and gentlemen into the last kilometer and a half they go our two leaders out in front Steven van Yerden and JD Julius Stephen van Heerden, Wally O. Fox, he's applied his trade on the track. He's keeping J.D. Julius in front of him now. That is the best position to find yourself in. You don't want to be on the front because now you can just concentrate on the ride in front of you. You don't have to worry about what's coming from behind. And you can start the sprint whenever you like, I guess. The wind is a prevailing headwind into the finishing line coming from their rider's left-hand side. So here we go. Into the last kilometer they go, J.D. Julius and Stephen van Heerden. This is the sprint for the victory. They're playing cat and mouse games now, marking each other. Stephen van Heerden doesn't want to go to the front. He wants to hold J.D. Julius just in front of him. J.D. Julius knows all about track racing as well. A man that's raced a lot in Europe. Applied his trade in Belgium. Swings across the road now, trying to make sure, or trying to get Stephen van Heerden to come in front of him. Across the road they go once again. Stephen van Heerden is having none of it. He's not having any of this. And there's the final bend in front of them. They're into the last kilometer. In fact, it's only 600 meters to go for our two leaders out in front. And uh, Stephen van Heerden has selected the gear. He wants to sprint in. Stephen van Heerden at the back of affairs. J.D. Julius in front of him. Around the far last corner they go. 300 meters to go from this corner to the finishing line. J.D. Julius still in front. And here we go into the last few hundred meters they go. And it is J.D. Julius leading it out. He puts him in the fence. Uh, Stephen Van Heerden complains. J.D. Julius takes the victory today ahead of Stephen Van Heerden. He's not happy about it, but J.D. Julius doing a pinch-perfect sprint to the line. He puts Stephen Van Heerden into the fence. There was no room for him there. Will he be uh, disqualified for that? I don't think so. Stephen was on the wrong side of the road altogether. So J.D. Julius takes the victory today for Team Pro Touch Cycling ahead of Stephen Van Heerden of Team Enza. What a victory it was today. 
So JD Julius takes the victory today for Team Pro Touch Cycling. What a finish that was. We're still waiting for the chase group to come across the line for third place. So here comes the chase group towards the line. TG was the team in front. Let's see what happens as they come towards the line now. It looks like this is a Nolan Hoffman that's going to come across the line, uh, taking third place at our defending champion has resigned to third place. He had a ride out in front there and he won't be happy with what he's about to hear. And Clint Hendricks uh, comes across the line as well is that uh, Stephen van Heerden was pipped to the line by J.D. Julius. So Nolan Hoffman, our defending champion, resigned to third place today. And uh, that is how the cookie crumbles. Will Stephen van Heerden lodge an appeal? We'll have to wait to see. But our victor today in the 2019 100 Cycle Challenge is J.D. Julius from Team Pro Touch Cycling. What a ride it was from him today. Congratulations. He is uh, alongside me here. He's just pulled up. He's uh, going to be talking to the commissaire, and the commissaire is having some stern words with him by the looks of things. Did he put him in the fence? Is he not happy with that? The commissaire is shaking his head at the moment, and the commissaire doesn't seem happy with it. The appeal has been launched, and uh, the race commissaire is having some serious words by, uh, with J.D. Julius at the moment. I don't think it's going to go his way, in fact. Uh, he doesn't look. He looks a bit distraught with what happened there. So, commissaire is going to be waiting to uh, get uh, both versions from JD Julius and Stephen van Heerden. He'll probably have a look at the camera footage once again to decide who our winner is today. So drama right here at the finishing line at the 100 cycle challenge. JD Julius putting Stephen van Heerden into the barriers but there was no room for him there. He made sure that the door was firmly shut and uh, JD Julius crossed the line in first place and Stephen van Heerden was not happy with the way the door was shut on him. I'm not too sure if he expected to finish on the other side of the road because uh, they've been going across on the left-hand side of the road and when it came to the final sprint, it went over to the far right-hand side and maybe that messed around with the psyche of both riders. But uh, so far, it's uh, unconfirmed. Provisional results as J.D. Julius taking the victory today ahead of Stephen van Yerden with Nolan Hoffman, uh, the 2018 champion, having to take uh, third place on the line. So, uh, unconfirmed just yet. Those are the top three results from uh, the racing in the Pro Elite race of the 1.2 sanctioned UCI One Day Classic. Uh, earlier this morning, in case you missed those results, it was Kimli Lacourt, that the defending champion, who managed to retain her title ahead of Marushka Matia, exactly carbon copy finish of last year's results, in fact, and also a sprint finish. So, well done to Kimli Lacourt of uh, Team... Uh, well, Demacon is the team she races for with Marushka Matia just behind her once again. So we're still waiting for the confirmed results from the commissaire who had some more harsh words with JD Julius alongside me at the start finishing line. Uh, there was a lot of head shaking, not happy with the way the sprint went, uh, but I'm not there to decide who the winner is. So it's up to the race commissaires, the race officials to decide who our official race winner is. We're going to go back to visuals on the start finishing line just to show you uh, some of the other riders that are coming through. And if our camera pans to the right hand side, that's where the commissaire at the moment is uh, talking to both the riders and deciding what is the outcome of the race today. Both uh, teams will be in that meeting to decide who is our race winner today. We're looking for that meeting between the race commissaire and uh, those are live fixtures at the moment. So JD Julius just in the far in the over the rider with a TG jersey. You can see that's in fact they're having a big conversation on the far side there to decide who is uh, wrong in the situation. I know I've been in a situation like this where you shut the door and uh, commissaires don't take too kindly to it to decide uh, the result. So our camera goes down to see if they can get into the conversation of what happened there. Our race winner is in conversation with our commissaire, the race officials. Mike Bradley is also there from uh, Cycling South Africa. And uh, we go across the road just to see if anything else. And there is uh, Stephen van Heerden alongside the uh, officials. He is the man that's lodged the appeal because he was wedged up against the fencing. He wasn't happy about that. He put his hand up and uh, he made the initial appeal. J.D. Julius crossed the line in front of him to take the victory. And maybe we're going to go back to a slow motion uh, view of what happened there. To this, uh, 
So uh, that is our situation at the moment. We're trying to decide what is the situation. It's been lodged by, an appeal has been lodged by Stephen van Neerden. No doubt that J.D. Julius, our race winner today, will do a counter lodge against that. He does not want to lose this victory today. 16,000 Rand is up for grabs, so our winner today. 8,000 Rand for second place. And UCI points also up for grabs for both of these riders. So uh, it is going to be a dramatic conclusion to this event, decided by the race commissaire who is going to decide the outcome of the race. And there comes the remnants of our race riders that have completed today's 2019 100 cycle challenge, the second edition of this race. And what a race has been today. Uh, 21 riders broke clear at about the 45 kilometer mark of 130 kilometers of racing. They stay clear and when they got onto the last 40 kilometers or so, it was Stephen van Eerden that made the initial break on the N17 highway. Jade Julius was the only rider that went with him to uh, make up that two-man breakaway group. They stayed clear for the entire 40 kilometers remaining in this year's race. And eventually it came up to a two-up sprint. And we'll go to that slow motion visuals of what happened. And take a look at this. It. This is the from He's the not final having corner. any of this. And there's so the final bend in front of them. Corner, the just in front of them. Stephen van Eerden is the rider behind JD Julius in front. He gets out of his saddle. JD Julius knows that they're going to be sprinting on the far side of the road. They get around the final corner. And they're going to have to swing over to the far right-hand side of the road. JD Julius still in the front. We lose the visuals there and they come around the corner and there we go. JD Julius puts him on inside and cuts him off completely. But it wasn't too severe. He kept his line, you know. So the commissaires need to decide on that. There we go. Another look. It's that initial switch he wasn't happy with. But he does open up the door once again. But by that time, it's already too late. Stephen Van Eerden's, uh thought the door was going to be shut completely on him and there's no point diving down the inside and hurting yourself because there was a big gutter as you can see on his right hand side there and the barricades so it's not for me to decide maybe you the viewer have at home have another opinion about that sprint from JD Julius and Stephen van Heerden and have your own opinion on the sprint let us know at uh, 100 cycle on Twitter and our social media pages. How do you see that final sprint? Do you see it going the way of JD Julius or do you see it going the way of Stephen van Heerden? So uh, let's go to the finish line once again. Uh, visuals there between the commissaire and uh, there he is standing with uh, the MC today. Stephen van Heerden is the man on the right hand side. He goes across the line there. That is the man that finished in second place. He lodged the appeal. Commissaire is alongside Alistair, the MC, and they're still deciding. I'm not too sure if they made a deliberation just yet. So we'll wait to hear what our Commissaire has to say. He's the official UCI Commissaire that has taken control of this race, and he's got the unenviable job of having to decide who is our race winner today. He's had a look at the official, he's getting further reports about uh, what the other commissaires may have seen. And now between the two of them and uh, the race officials, they need to decide what is the outcome of this dramatic conclusion to the 100 cycle challenge uh, 2019 hosted by the city of Kuruleni. And it has been an entertaining day and the entertainment is still <laughs> high as we speak. Uh, lots of drama still to keep us on our toes and suspenses right there as we wait for the uh, final results from this year's race. A two-up sprint between Stephen van Eerden and Jade Julius. Uh, Jade Julius took the victory, but uh, Stephen van Eerden wasn't happy with the way that Jade Julius sprinted there, putting him into the barriers and leaving not enough room. So an initial switch there look very light initially, but you're not allowed to move if you're lying so severely in the last few hundred meters. Uh, Stephen van Eerden did find himself on the wrong side of the wheel. Had he uh, gone to the left-hand side, it would have opened up a huge window of opportunity for him. But as we see it, the wind was also coming from the left-hand side. So Jay Julius had every right to keep it along the right-hand side of the road uh, to decide uh, who was going to be the victor today. Uh, he was, uh, he put him in a slight predicament in there. And the commissaires are still deciding. I'm just looking over to the uh, officials. Jay Julius is standing alongside them. 
along with Steven van Yerden and still no word from them at all. And that is how it is at the moment. So we're still waiting to find out what is the situation as uh, our race officials need to decide on the outcome of this race. But thank you so much for joining us as we head on over back to pictures of the uh, start finish the line just to see what they're up to. And uh, thank you for joining us. Mike Bradley is also over there at the start finishing line. Commissaires are having another look. They're actually coming into our OB vehicle to decide what is the outcome of it. And maybe we'll also have a look at those visuals as they looking at it and uh, give us your opinion on uh, what you think uh, the outcome of this race should be. Should the victory go to JD Julius, who took the victory across the line, but uh, it looked like he switched Stephen van Heerden into the fence. So we're taking a look at that visuals again. And here comes the slow-mo for you. Uh, Chris uh, is the director inside the van. He's trying to roll it back for commissaires to decide what he saw. And so what the uh, commissaires also saw. And this is the final kilometer of racing as we take a look at it and once again. Our camera pans over to the right hand side to pick up our two race winners today. That is Stephen van Yerden in second wheel, Trady Julius just in front of him. And uh, those are the two leaders. They go past the Ran Airport. At this point, Stephen van Yerden decides he's not going to go past JD Julius. He feels he's found. The place that he wants to sprint from as we uh, go back to visuals again of those riders out in front there mike bradley also standing alongside me looking at these visuals jd julius still on the front he switches across the road jd julius trying to get stephen van Heerden to come across and take up the lead the and uh, stephen van Heerden, the wily old fox he is he's got great track experience decides no he wants to stay in uh, the second position, that is the best position to sprint from because you only have to worry about the rider in front of you. J.D. Julius having to look over his shoulder and negotiate what's in front of him. He goes across the road, calls for Stephen Van Heerden to go through. Stephen Van Heerden decides, no, I'm not going through. Back across the road, another attempt to get him to go through. Once again, he says no. That is the final corner in front of them. They're inside the last 500 meters of racing. He's on the far right hand side of the road. And J.D. Julius knows that the road is going to open up to his right-hand side. The wind is also coming from their left-hand sides, by the way, which means that the sprint should be down the right-hand side, as J.D. Julius correctly called. He had worked out, coming down the start finishing straight, that that is the best place to go. And there we go. There's the sprint already taking place. His hand is raised. There is a bit of daylight between the two of them and that fence. We'll have to wait and see, because that's not the best shot. You're, the next shot you're about to see, there we go, is the shot of him switching him initially into the fence. He puts up his hand, but was it so severe? I'm not too sure. I just think that maybe Stephen van Heerden had lost his had lost his nerve. He got into the wrong side of the wheel. JD Julius knows that the sprint was down the right hand side. So he had the right line to take. But unfortunately, we have to wait now for the commissaires to make up their minds. It's not up to me and you. You can have your opinion back home. My opinion is that maybe it should stay as it is. Uh, you might have a differing opinion at home as you look at that uh, visuals as uh, our commissaires are taking a look at the visuals that is jd julius on the left hand side of screen there with his team manager tony harding also waiting for the outcome and there we go again that's a slow motion this is what we're looking at i think this is the best view you got as you're about to view it and jd julius he's, he's already down the right hand side he's trying to go down the inside and nothing there yet, nothing there yet. He's just down the wrong side. He hasn't switched him yet. I think he's lost his nerve. He pushes JD Julius, it looks like, and he's not supposed to raise his hand and touch the rider in front of him at all. How's this going to go? Here we go. There's that initial move that we were talking about. So he's down the right hand side. He's trying to go through the gap. JD Julius feels him coming, and he does a quick flick to his right hand side, closes the door, and that, I think, is the movement that the commissaires will be looking at. Was it severe? Was it enough room? He does open it up again. And then we go forward. And there we go. Was there enough room for him still? I'm not too sure. I mean, you can see that's a huge lip. If he goes down there, he's going to crash. So he lifts up his hand there at that point in time, pushes Steady Julius aside, or just raises his hand. I'm not too sure. We can't tell from that angle if there's contact at all. 
But uh, Stephen, knowing that there was not enough room for him to go through there, I'm not too sure. So it's difficult to tell from that. But here we go again. We're going to reverse the shot again. You decide for yourself at home. What do you think? So there we go. We go into the last. That is what we saw initially. You can see it there. That's the view from the front. So unfortunately, it's a bit of a shaky shot there to start off. There you can't really tell if there was enough room for him to go up the inside. And there is a gap opened up again. But at that point, he's already closed the door on Stephen van Yerden. Very difficult to tell. Uh, my call is that maybe he just lost his nerve, Stephen van Yerden. He shouldn't have gone up that side of the road knowing the wind is coming from the left-hand side. JD Julius had every right to make sure that, that he sp stayed up the right-hand side. But it's that initial switch that he does on his right-hand point. He felt Stephen van Yerden coming up his right-hand side. He did a slight flick. And then open up the door again. So maybe the officials will take to that. Maybe they'll take kindly to Jade Julius after because he opened up the door once again. So it's up for you to decide at home. Have your opinion. Tell us at 100 Cycle. Uh, that is our Twitter handle. Or you can tell us uh, via my Twitter handle. It's at Owen Honey. One word is what you need to decide for me. We're going to the start finishing line again as we uh, have a look at social media as well. And we wait for our commissaires to make up their mind. So high drama right here at the 100 cycle challenge. And uh, we wait to hear what the outcome is. So we still have live streaming for you. And we... Well, it's been a day of high drama right here at the 2019 100 cycle challenge brought to you by the city of Akureleni. And the uh, commissaires have made up their mind. Eric Follins looked at all the footage and decided that the results will stay as it is, which means that J.D. Dulles of Team Pro Touch Cycling takes the victory ahead of Stephen van Nierden of Team Enza Cycling with uh, Nolan Hoffman, uh, the defending champion, or the 2018 champion, taking third place today. So that's the final results and how the commissaires saw it. Despite J.D. Julius ever so slightly closing the door, he, they felt that there was enough room for Stephen van Nierden and uh, that he, he had every right then uh, to uh, stay where he was. And they saw it the way I kind of saw it. I thought that J.D. Julius held his line afterwards. He left enough space for, uh, uh, for, for Stephen van Nierden to come through, but he got caught on the wrong side of the wheel. The wind was coming from their left-hand side. The sprint was always going to take place, uh, take place on the right-hand side. Any professional cyclist would know that if they read the wind conditions correctly towards the finishing line. And uh, therefore, uh, he should have just laid back ever so slightly and taken the line up the inside, the left-hand side, and not the line up the right-hand side, which was always going to be a bit more dangerous. So the result stands as it is right here at the 2019 100 Cycle Challenge brought to you by the city of Kuruleni. The victory taken today by uh, Jay Julius, Stephen van Heerden in second place and Nolan Hoffman in third place. Just to remind you of the women's result, it was uh, Team Democrats Kim Lacourt who take, took her second consecutive victory right here at the 100 cycle challenge ahead of Marushka Metzia and uh, it was Joanna van Winkel in third place. That wraps up our coverage of a fantastic production once again. We apologize for not bringing you that first 40 kilometers of racing, but I'm sure we made it all up for you in the final 70 kilometers of racing right here at uh, Germiston Lake was where we broadcast from. Uh, well, thank you to Virtual Productions. Thank you to all our sponsors who made this a successful broadcast once again. And we look forward to your company again next year for the 2020 edition of the 100 Cycle Challenge. For myself, Owen Honey, and the rest of the virtual production team and all of those who made this a successful running today, thank you so much and we look forward to your company again next year. Cheers for now.